Many Greetings, my sisters. Hope you're just having a wonderful day today. And I want you to get super excited because this week we are going to be blessed by attending the 2022 Windy City Lectures. Aren't you ready to learn something new? And this year we are blessed to have an addition to the lectures because we have added a ladies component. And can I tell you that the women that we have down to speak for us this week are a grand group of sisters with a lot of wisdom and a lot of spiritual wisdom and practical wisdom. <clears throat> And they are going to encourage us, make us laugh, make us stop and think, and just help us to grow. The theme for the 2022 lectureship is On the Other Side of Jordan, Taking a Stand and Capturing New Land in a Post-Pandemic Present. And if COVID-19 hasn't taught us anything, it's that change sometimes has to take place. And the things that we're used to doing, we're not going to be doing anymore. Or if we do, we might just have to do them a little bit differently. And that's okay. So get your Bibles, get your journals, and let's have a great time of learning. Welcome to the 2022 Windy City Lectures. She was very young. She's beautiful on the inside and the outside. And <laughs> she's really smart too. Um, she holds a special place in my heart and always will because her mother is the best friend I ever had. And I know that she's gonna speak to us directly 
authentically and with transparency. I speak of none other than attorney Dortricia Penn, our sister in Christ from the Robbins Church of Christ. And tonight she is sharing with us something really, really vital. Her topic is legal strategies for the local church to embrace during a pandemic and post pandemic culture. Get your pens and papers out. Be ready to um, put down some information because we are about to be blessed. Good afternoon. My name is Dortricia Penn and I am a member of the Robbins Church of Christ in Robbins, Illinois, where my father, David C. Penn, is the pastor. In addition, I am a licensed attorney in the state of Illinois. Today, I am here to speak to you on the topic of legal strategies for the local church to embrace during a pandemic. I want to start this piece with a biblical reference that we should consider even in these strange times. And, there, and this is none other than Matthew 18, 20. For where two or more are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst. As we are more than aware of the power in this text, this has not been an easy feat during these pandemic and post pandemic times. But as Psalms 27, 14 tells us, Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. In the scripture, the word wait means to hope, to anticipate, and to trust. To hope and to trust in the Lord requires faith, patience, long suffering keeping the commandments and enduring until the end. But as we wait for our society to reopen, to return to some semblance of normalcy post pandemic, church leaders must be aware that compliance with local ordinances and executive orders from governors and from the states may not be the only legal issue they may face. As there are significant risks of lawsuits against churches in the, uh, in the coming days, and as the fallout of the pandemic continues, this commentary offers a few suggestions that the local church can consider during and post pandemic. The following are only a few pieces, as I said, of legal information for your consideration, but it is not legal advice. If you need legal advice, especially as it pertains to your local church, you should consult an attorney licensed in your state. With that said, here are some factors and questions to consider as your church works towards regathering. Review your insurance policy and discuss your coverage with your insurance carrier. It is advisable that you contact your church's insurance company for information about your general liability coverage for COVID-19 related claims and other claims as you reopen. As there or, or excuse me, are there any requirements for your insurance company in regard to sanitation protocols that you must follow in order for your insurance to, pro to provide such coverage? If your insurance will not provide coverage for COVID-19 related claims, consider a rider policy to cover any COVID-19 related incidents. Even if your church does not do anything wrong and upholds the highest standards, 
it is still costly to defend a lawsuit. While in most situations, church leadership is protected from being held personally liable for wrongdoings of the church, in the event that the church is sued for gross negligence, there is a possibility that church leaders, such as pastors, deacons, and elders, could be held personally liable for not meeting their duty of care to members and visitors on their church grounds. As such, it is incredibly important to uphold high standards as your church begins to regather and completely reopen its facilities. Understand and comply with legal requirements. What does your state and local government say about what you must do to provide or, or provide for as you reopen? Does your state provide any suggested guidance, which is not required, but instead recommended as best practices in light of transmission of disease in your area? If so, these suggestions might set the standard of care that would be considered when deliberating whether your church met its duty of care in the event your church is sued. It is advisable to make a record of what protocols you put in place and why you chose to do what you did. Document this information so that in the event that you are sued, you have evidence of the safety me measures enacted and answers as to why you were doing what you were doing or what best practices you had in place. Keep face coverings and hand sanitizer regular, regularly available. It is important to remember that having these items on hand and available as members and visitors enter the building is important to promoting the health and safety of everyone who congregates. Respect others, other members' desire to socially distance and encourage your membership to also respect this. One of the fears that many members have in returning to the sanctuary is the possibility that they may be unable to socially distance. This is a mixed bag because there will be some members who do not see this, uh, this necessity as they may be vaccinated or for other various reasons. This divergent way of thinking might cause members who wish to maintain a level of distance apprehension. Let us be respectful of everyone's right to socially distance during these uncertain times. Encourage those who are sick to stay home. While most of us look forward to gathering with our brothers and sisters for worship, we must encourage members of our body to stay home when they are feeling ill. This helps protect the health and safety of all members, especially the older members, children, and those who are more susceptible to the virus. It is also important to gather details in the event a member reports a positive case of COVID-19. It's very important to encourage members to, uh, to share information regarding a positive COVID-19 test if they have been in the sanctuary and amongst other members. We should, if at all possible, make those who were in close contact aware that someone has reported a positive case of COVID-19 and that they were in close contact or a, co a close contact to that individual. Please do this without identifying the member as to avoid HIPAA violations. Again, this is a preventative measure and may protect you from legal implications in the future. Leadership should be the example. With regard to all the above that we've discussed, leadership should be practicing what we preach. When members and visitors see leadership following best practices, it is easier to encourage others to also follow. While we all have choices in the way we carry out protocol, if we are not following that protocol, 
it becomes difficult to encourage others to do the same. Embrace a hybrid model of participation in cases where this approach is sensible. Both in-person and virtual gatherings are encouraged where sensible. We live in an age of technology. If our congregations include members that would utilize a online form of worship, we should do what we can to make this option available. It not only makes the in-person transition easier, it keeps those members who are unable or aren't quite, quite ready to return to the sanctuary plugged in. Many online members from different communities who connect with worship will do so virtually. The, major, uh, the majority of churches will continue to have a Sunday worship service. But for those who have members who would benefit from an online presence, these multiple options will keep members connected. Become more community oriented. We should utilize this time to become more community oriented, using the church as a vehicle to do so. As we are aware, this pandemic has had a negative effect on our community in many ways. However, as we rebuild, it is advisable that we become community focused as well. Understanding that connecting with our communities can promote a sense of loyalty to the church and may also grow our membership. Be encouraged. While we are all praying for the safe return of our full membership body, let us remember that in these times, the strength of the church will be manifested in small group connections rather than large crowd size. The post-COVID church will need to focus more on spiritual muscle than physical mass of the church. Partnerships with sister congregations may form. As a result of the pandemic, local churches have become more collaborative partners with sister congregations. In this, many churches will discover that they do not have to go it alone. Formal and informal partnerships between sister congregations may evolve as networks between those who will share ideas. They will also, or may also, share resor resources, assignments, and in some cases, they may even share space. Continue to deliver the good news. As we slowly emerge from our coronavirus concerns, people uh, are even more hungry. Our members are even more hungry for the good news. In this time, members as well as leadership need to hear as much positivity as possible. As I close, I will leave you with Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some of us are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Let us move forward in a spirit of hope, anticipation, and trust in the Lord. Thank you. Sister Dornita Gibbs from the Gateway Community Church of Christ in St. Louis, Missouri, has a quiet, gentle spirit. But she has wisdom and conviction and commitment to serving God. And she is going to bless us tonight on the topic how the pandemic has impacted our educational system and what sisters of the local church can do. This is a really good one 
because we need to be involved in the education of our children and in our communities. So ladies, let's get ready to listen to what Sister Gibbs wants to share with us. I would like to take this time to thank Dr. Penn, Dr. Harrison, and the Windy City Lecture for giving me this opportunity to speak about how the pandemic affected schools. I pray that in this endeavor, we may be able to find some solutions that can help make the educational world a better place for our students. During the pandemic, there were many things that negatively impacted us. There was a chip shortage which affected everything from a cell phone to a car and many things in between. There was also a shortage on, of all things, toilet paper and paper towels. How do you get to be short on toilet and paper towels is just beyond what I believe. There were food shortages as well, and there was also delays in delivery of furniture and appliances. Brother Gibbs and I ordered a couch in January of 2021. We received monthly calls telling us that the delivery date had been delayed, had been delayed and delayed. Finally, in December, we received a call saying that they had part of the couch and asked us if we would like for them to bring it. And we said yes, since we had been over a year without a sofa. Then in January, finally, of 2022, we received the last piece of the couch, and it is now complete. One of the things that was affected most is schools. So let's look at some things that affected children in the educational world and some things that we can do to help with that. The first group I want to talk about are parents. What were the, some of the challenges that parents faced? Some of them had to challenge balancing working from home and taking care of their children and making sure that they did their schoolwork as well. Something that uh, parents learned that their children are not the darling angels that they always claim for them to be. The many calls from teachers and the principal, the mothers and fathers were seeing that those things were tr indeed true of their children. Sometimes there was a limited access to technology. You may have four kids in school, but only one laptop for them to work with. There were issues with the lack of the internet and Wi-Fi, and sometimes parents even had to work. Those frontline workers, they had to work, and unfortunately, the children had to fend for themselves. And then something else that affected parents was mental health struggles, just dealing with all of the stress and the changes and the shelter in place orders, all of those things began to take a toll on all of us. And now let's look at the teachers. What are some of the things that challenge the teachers? One of the biggest challenges for most teachers was to switch from in-person learning to virtual learning. Many schools are not able to supply the training for teachers to be able to do the virtual learning in an effective way. There was a lack of student partic participation as well. And at that time, many school administrators told the teachers they could not fail a student, even if that student was failing before the pandemic. They had to pass them to the next level with the grade C or better, which then caused many struggles for the teachers that they had coming up because then they had to try to help those students to get caught up as well as keep pace with those that were where they were supposed to be. Some of the teachers had it so bad that they had to go to the schools and copy the books, create packets, and then make sure that those students received those packets. However, oftentimes those packets were not returned to the teachers and yet they still had to give those students a passing grade. Training to teach virtually and in the uh, versus in the classroom was also an issue. It also stifled the teachers' creativity. Children learn best when teachers are allowed to teach in a way that keeps their attention and in a way that they understand. Oftentimes, teachers today are unable to do that because they have to 
not teach their ch students, but teach them to be ready to take, take scores, but not really learn what they are capable of learning. Sometimes the issue for teachers are those people that do not work in the school system or have not been in there for quite some time trying to tell them how to be a teacher. They have no idea what it is that teachers go through, the stress that they experience, the behavior of the children negatively, as well as issues with the parents. One thing that schools have done since then was created a hybrid model. That is where part of the students go to school online, part of the students are in person, and just trying to balance that all and keep up with which students are where was quite a burden on the teachers. And then coming back, there is a lack of structure because students have been out of the classroom for so long that they were out, out of touch with how they should carry themselves in school. And so oftentimes there are fights and things going on in the hallways because of things that carry over from, whether it's from Facebook or other social media areas. And now let's look at the students. What were some of the challenges that they faced? One of the things was the abrupt change from in-person learning to virtual learning. When this shelter-in-place order was first administered, they said it would be not more than two weeks and everything would be back to normal. And that two weeks for many schools turned into almost two years. And so students did not have what they needed. The school that I worked for, fortunately, we were able to provide Chromebooks for all of our students. But we are a small private school that receives fun funding from donors, and we don't have to worry about the government at all. But for many of those children, they did not have that access. They only had outdated materials that the teachers had made up packets for, and the parents were not always present. Sometimes they had to work. Sometimes it's just because they were dealing with their own mental health issues, which left the children to fend for themselves. Sometimes the older siblings had to resp be responsible for the younger siblings. So while their work was completed, and turned in, the older sibling oftentimes didn't get the chance to do their own work. One Another effect on it was the drop in test scores. Because the children were not in school and were not focused in learning, their reading scores and math scores went down the tube, which made it more difficult for them when they went to that next level. Some of the schools decided, again, to um, pass the students regardless of their participation. They also had to deal with staff shortages. Even before the pandemic was announced, there were some school districts that were dealing with students and teachers who had been out sick for as long as two weeks and more, but they didn't know exactly what it is that was going on. The problem that caused is that the students that weren't sick in that teacher's class couldn't always have a substitute, and sometimes classes had to be divided and added to other classes that were where the teachers were present, which made it difficult for that teacher because they didn't know what it is that student had been learning. They're trying to figure that out as well as keep up with their own students work. <clears throat> they didn't always know where they were going to eat and they had to get reacclimated to being in school. Some of the overall struggles that we've seen are the mask mandates. Such a small thing has caused so much turmoil and division that it is just absolutely ridiculous. And there's, there's the social distancing. You have people that just don't care and will get in your face without a mask and do what it is that they would like to do. And then the biggest challenge has been the mental health issues that have been brought out because of the being uh, in place for so long. And students also miss seniors in high school. They were unable to have their prom. They missed graduation and other senior events that they would normally have had access to uh, during the school year. So what can we as Sisters in Christ do to help? One thing that we can do is volunteer in schools. You can adopt the school in your local community and find out from the principal and teachers of that school what it is that they need in order to be supported in their endeavor. They could use things, help buy school supplies for the teachers, help buy copy paper. For some 
schools, copy paper is considered to be white gold. Things like crayons, pencils, and pens, rulers, and all of those things that students need to be able to learn that they don't always have access to. We can also start after school programs, help them out by starting a big brother and big sister program, mentor the students and help them to see that they are able to do more than what they think they are capable of. Help to provide for them. If you see that they need shoes, if students are tr struggling for shoes or clothing, try to find out that information. When I was, we were in Michigan, I worked for Buena Vista Charter Township and one of the things that they did was a program called uh, Shoes for Kids. And basically what we would do is contact different retailers once a year and ask them if they would make a donation of shoes to a certain school. And so between the retail stores and the board members, we would have enough shoes to take to and supply shoes for entire an entire elementary school. So things are just some of the things that we can do that we can help hope to help and make life easier for those children that have the struggles that we didn't have to have. Thank you. God bless. So deep in sin Very deeply stained within But the master of the sea yes, When he heard my call Jesus rescued me He rescued me Yes he did From life's stormy sea He rescued me he pulled me in. He me. I don't know why. He me. All I know is I, I'm so glad about he it. Me. I was living in sin. Thought I was alright. Yeah, yes. But before too long, I found myself out drifting. In life sinful sea, sinking much too deep when he rescued me. There's no doubt in my mind who set me free. I was all the way gone on the other side. Still he came along and rescued me. No, you don't know. Say you don't know He saved me from That shock like used to be Hey, amazing grace How sweet the sound I once was lost I once was lost I once was lost But now I'm found Oh, yeah He's so amazing Yeah prayed for me oh somebody prayed for me i don't know who i don't know who i don't even know when, when it was oh but thank god that they thank did me. for i was on my I way on my way to a devil's, a hell. devil's hell but look at, but me, look now. at me now 
I'm doing well, cause now I'm on my way to a better place, cause somebody pray for me, Lord, somebody pray for me, let me tell you, somebody pray for me, they must have had me on their mind. When I was living in sin, far from God, I thought I was doing fine. Then my days got dark and full of pain. See, Satan's winds started creeping in, but he lost control of my soul. Cause somebody prayed for me Yes, somebody prayed for me Glory, hallelujah Somebody prayed for me Oh, somebody prayed for me I don't know who it was And I can't say when Devil's hell. But look at me now. I've got a new story to tell. Hey, hey, I'm on my way to a better place, y'all. Cause somebody, somebody prayed for me. Oh, yes, they did. Somebody prayed for me. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody prayed for me. When I could not pray for myself But I knew that if I wanted salvation I had to make a change The first step was up to me This is what I did I went down to the church house And I made this humble plea I said when the saints get together to pray for the sinners Oh, please don't forget about me No, please don't forget about me And they must have heard me Because somebody, somebody, somebody prayed, prayed for me, me. Woo, Lord oh, somebody, somebody prayed for me I don't know which well, saint I it was know who And I can't tell you when I'm just so glad I'm so glad they did See, I was on my way I was headed for certain destruction Oh, but look at me now I'm going in a new direction Hey, hey, I'm on my way To a better place now Cause somebody, somebody Prayed for me Oh, somebody Prayed and I know, and I know, and I know oh, that somebody, somebody prayed for me. It could have been my oh, darling mother. Yeah. For me. It could have been my oh, loving father. Prayed oh, for it could have been. It could have oh, been somebody, somebody who's been through something. Me. And they know that they know oh, that they know that they know what prayer can do. Me. Yes, they know who the prayer. Prayer can travel across an ocean Oh yes it can And they know that a prayer A prayer can travel faster than a bullet can Hey, they know that prayer Prayer, 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 prayer Prayer is the only way that we can talk to the Lord And they know that the prayers of the righteous Avail it much And that's why I'm glad Somebody prayed for Somebody prayed for me For me yeah. Welcome everyone. I am Brother Bobby Dean Sr., an assistant minister at the Chatham Avalon Church of Christ where Dr. Harrison is the head minister. 
I would like to thank Dr. David C. Penn for allowing me to be a part of the Windy City Lectureship and for, for having the Windy City Lectureship where God can be glorified and his people edified. And I'd like to thank Dr. Penn for all the many times he has taught me and, and brought me along the way, teaching me what thus saith the word of God. God bless you and your family, Dr. Penn. Well, what the Lord has put on my heart today to bring to you is entitled, Be Courageously Faithful to the Lord Unto the End. Be Courageously Faithful to the Lord Unto the End. Now, scripture is Joshua 5, 1 through 7. And it says, Now it happened when all the kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan to the west, and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan before Israel until they had crossed over. Their hearts melted in despair, and there was no fighting spirit in them any longer because of the Israelites and what God had done for them. You see, my brothers and sisters, when we do what the Lord tells us to do, he will see us through. And when all is said and done, we will have won the victory. We must be courageously faithful to Jehovah unto the end, above and beyond all else. That's it. That's all. The scripture goes on to say, at the time of the at that time the Lord said to Joshua, make for yourself flint knives and circumcise the new generation of the of the sons of Israel as was done before. So Joshua made flint knives, circumcised the sons of Israel. This is the reason why Joshua circumcised them. All the people who came out of Egypt, who were males, all the men of war, had died in the wilderness along the way. After they left Egypt, all the males who came out were circumcised. But all the males who were born in the wilderness on the way as they left Egypt had not been circumcised. For the Israelites walked 40 years, you all, in the wilderness until all the nations, that is, the men of war who came out of Egypt, died. You may ask, why did they die? Well, the word says, because they did not listen to the voice of the Lord. To them the Lord had sworn an oath that he would not let them see the land which he had promised to their fathers to give us a land of abundance flowing with milk and honey. So it was their uncircumc uncircumcised sons whom he raised up in their place, whom Joshua circumcised because circumcision had not been performed the, along the way. So, you all, listen, crossing the Jordan River, cro crossing the Jordan River was a key event in Israel's history. Just as crossing the Red Sea changed Israel's standing from slavery to freedom, passing through the Jordan into the Promised Land transformed Israel from a wandering people and to an established nation. These, these, these momentous acts by the people of God were acts of great faith, faith in the Lord God Almighty. We see here what can happen to God's people when they have faith or lack the faith to stand on God's word, to believe that what God says he will do. That is what? He will do, come hell or high water. For those who had obedient faith and courage, they received everything God said that he would do, that they would get. But for those who lacked obedient faith, courage, they lost, they lost it all. You see, we need to understand that we, 
the children of God must be courageous. We must be courageous, faithful to our loving our Father, the Lord God Almighty, until the end. For without faith, it is impossible to please God, right? If this, if this means, if it means that we may suffer, then we, beloved, suffer for the Lord's glory. If this means we must die, then we die in the service of the Lord God Almighty for His glory. Always putting God first in all we say and do, no matter the cost to self. We cannot be afraid of taking a stand on the Word of God and capturing new land. Glorifying God, edifying His people, and making disciples of Christ. <laughs> In a pre-pandemic, ongoing pandemic, post-pandemic, or in a future pandemic state of existence. You see, we must be faithfully courageous about, lo about the Lord's work in the loving spirit of Christ. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If we be the Lord's, if it be the Lord's will, if it be the Lord's will that we burn or not burn in the fiery furnace, we will do what the Lord has commanded us to do. To Jehovah be the glory, hallelujah. Just like Daniel, we will, we will not let, we will not let anyone or anything scare us or make us ashamed or diminish our loving service, devotion, and worship for our loving our Father. Even though they may threaten or actually put us in a den of starved, hungry lions, we will worship the Lord our God the way He commands us to in His Word. Just like Joshua and Caleb, the only two circumcised men of fighting age that came out of Egypt that went into the Promised Land. You see, even though they were, there were giants in the land, that made the people of God look like ants when compared to them. Joshua and Caleb trusted in God, no matter what the obstacles may have been, no matter how insurmountable the task may have looked. They knew that God will always do what he said he will do. They knew that in the end they would be victorious because Jehovah said so. That's it. That's all. They had faith, you all. They had faith. They put their, they put their faith in Jehovah. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. They walked by faith, not by sight. Hallelujah, somebody. That's what we're supposed to do. So how about us? They believed that if God said we can do a thing, then guess what? We can do that thing. Hallelujah. Now, ask yourself, is that what we believe? Do we have the courage of our convictions in the Lord? Do we have courageous faith like Joshua and Caleb to take a stand in the loving glory and might of our Lord and take the new land in a pandemic world? Come what may, whatever may come, to glorify God, edify his people, and make disciples of Christ. Or will we be, or continue to be, like those faithless, fearful cowards who had no faith in our loving Abba Father, Almighty God, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. God says that by, that that but as for cowardly and faithless, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire, Lord have mercy, and sulfur, which is the second death. Because you see, my beloved brothers and sisters, God did not give us a spirit of timidity. Oh no, a cowardice, a fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and Love and a sound judgment 
and personal discipline, abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. So, so we, you and I, we should never, ever be the ones running around like Chicken Little screaming, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, our, our, our cowardly, cowering in a corner in fear of death or anyone or anything else for that matter. We should be the ones who ask God for wisdom, knowledge, to understand a thing to, so that we can continue to carry out the will of Jehovah Shalom, our peace, no matter the obstacles, no matter what the frightened people or authorities are saying or doing. When all others are running away from the fiery fight, the, we, the, the, the giants in the land, in, 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 we stand our ground. We plant our feet. We move forward. We move forward in faith, doing what the Lord has commanded us to do. Come what may. We remain faithful to the Lord to the end and take the land as Jehovah has commanded us to do because we, the children of God, do not fear death or anything else but disappointing our loving our Father. Is that right? Now, we may, like our Lord and Savior Jesus, have a problem with the suffering we may have to endure. Being in agony, sweat, may become like great drops of blood falling down to the ground from us. But like our Lord, we will with much fervent prayer and courageous faith complete the mission our Lord has given us to do because we put our faith in the Lord unto the end, lovingly glorifying him, edifying his people, and making disciples of Christ, regardless, regardless of the giants in the spirit and, and the spirit of fear in the land. We will be faithful, faithful to the Lord until the end. Like, jo like, like Joshua, we will be more and more like Christ faithfully courageous unto the end, doing what the Lord says in faith. Come what may, whatever may come, we will do what the Lord says we should do. And when we will have what the Lord says we should have, if we remain faithful, unlike those first circumcised warriors of Israel that came out of Egypt, who lost their faith in Jehovah. What you say? When they saw the giants in the promised land, Lord have mercy. But we, my beloved brothers and sisters, walk by faith. Again, we walk by faith, not by sight. Hallelujah, somebody. If we, if we could, think on this. If we could or can go to places like our job, Home Depot, Walmart, Sam's Club, the grocery store, Walgreens, the beauty and barber shop, the post office, funerals, weddings, gas stations, parties, concerts, out to dinner, destination vacations, rallies. How about protest marches? How about to vote? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Shouldn't we have taken this crisis opportunity? To show the world our faith in God and just like Joshua and stand up against the giants of the land and do what God has asked us to do. And in the doing, prove to the world how strong our faith is in the Lord God Almighty, knowing that faith without works is dead. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel, Joshua, Caleb, Peter, Paul, and our most wonderful, magnificent, glorious, kind, loving, powerful, and understanding Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Showing by our actions, our works, if you will, the world, the hope we have in us because of our faith in God. 
at a time when the world most desperately needed and needs the hope of God. We as God's children should always, with faith in the Lord, stand up against the giants of the land, using godly wisdom to do what the Lord tells us in his word to do. We should never be like the first Israelite warriors out of Egypt. They did not have enough hope and faith in Jehovah to overcome their fear of the giants in the land. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. To put their lives in his hands alone. To do what thus saith the Lord. We, on the other hand, should always find a way as the church, the body of Christ, to worship the Lord the way he asked us to, to act it out, to openly praise and thank the Lord, to fellowship, to pray, sing, and cry out unto the Lord as the body of Christ, to glorify God, to edify his people, and make disciples of Christ. You know, you know, look, it is such a wonderful, peaceful state of being. Yes. Be beyond description, you all, when we come to the realization of who God really is and who he is to us, his children, the worry and fear just melts away, being replaced by God's spirit of happiness, <laughs> joy, Peace, love, self-control, and an unwavering, faithful confidence of victory in Christ Jesus. You know, you know, God gives us many, many opportunities to prove our loyalty and loving devotion to him. And to show the world that our love our faith in him is stronger than anything the world or the devil and his minions have to offer or throw at us. That our faith in him is far beyond any human measure. That we stand on the word of God come what may. We will not be moved in the loving spirit of Christ. We will carry out God's statutes and commandments regardless of how, how big threatening or deadly the obstacles may be that stand in our way or come into our lives. We will do what thus saith the Lord God Almighty with godly wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and in a Christ-like loving spirit without timidity, cowardice, or fear of anything or anybody except disappointing our loving Lord, the Almighty God putting our faith, hope, and loving devotion in the Lord, just like Joshua and Caleb. We, the children of God, cannot let fear keep us from doing what our loving our Father has required, commanded of us. You see, because that spirit of fear, of timidity, of cowardice, is not from the Lord. It's just not. Now, I can hear, I can just hear you saying, Brother Dean, Brother Dean, you just don't understand. We can't do all the things that God wants us to do in these times of a pandemic. It's just too dangerous and scary now, man. Mother, love, brothers and sisters, let me give you a little, just a little history. The Church of Christ began as a despised, illicit religion, religious sect. Christianity endured 300 years of hostility. During the great Christian persecution, Christian churches and texts were destroyed. Meeting for Christian worship was forbidden, and those Christians who refused to recant, deny Christ, lost their legal rights. There were seizures and uh, destructions of their property, incitements or hatred against them. They, 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 they incited 
riots against them, arrests, imprisonments, beating, tortures, murder, and executions. You know what? Even though these first century Christians could be put to death in some of the most horrific ways, these first century Christians use faith, godly wisdom, knowledge and understanding, and a loving devotion to the Lord to continue to meet and worship in spite of threats of persecution, suffering, and dare I say it, death. They fought the giants, they took the land, and Christianity spread around the whole known world. What about us? What are we doing? What will we do? Will we die a thousand cowardly deaths by cowering in fear at everything and anything that comes along? God says the wicked flee when no one pursues. Or will we be the righteous servants of Jehovah, bold as lions, standing on God's word and being courageously faithful to the Lord to the end, dying only once and then the judgment, doing what thus saith the Lord God Almighty, come what may. Let us go against the giants and take the land that the Lord has given us. With confidence in the Lord, Jehovah. Jehovah says in Isaiah 41, 9 through 13, You whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from the farthest regions and said to you, You are my servant. I have chosen you and have not cast you away. Fear not. For I am with you. Be not dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold all those who were enraged against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing, nothing, and those who strive with you shall perish. You shall seek them and not find them. Hallelujah. Those who contended with you, those who war against you, shall be as nothing. Do you hear the Lord? As a non-existent thing. God says, for I, the Lord your God will hold your right hand, saying to you, fear not, I will help you. Glory, hallelujah. God says in John 14 and 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. When you are when we do, when we do, hallelujah, what the Lord tells us to do. He will see us through. He will see us through. And when, when all is said and done, we will have won the victory. We must be faithful to Jehovah above and beyond all else. The Lord says in Proverbs 29, as I close, and 25, the fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Mm. You all, be courageously faithful to the Lord until the end, and fear not, for the Lord God Almighty is with his people. We can do what God says we can do. We have to put our faith and trust in him. Step out and do what God says do regardless of what may be happening. Enjoy the peace and love of God. <laughs> may God bless you and those you love. Doings to veil my face, I want to yeah. Doings to veil my feet, I want to Doings to fly away, I know, I know the, the world, world can't do me no. Um, two wings, I want two wings, two wings, just to veil my face. I want two wings, two wings, to veil my feet. I want two wings.
two wings to fly away. I know the world came to me no harm. Two wings, I want two wings. Two wings to bear my face. I want two wings. Two wings to bear my feet. I want two wings. Two wings to fly away. I know the world, the world came to me no harm. Listen to me now. One of these old mornings. And it won't be long no. You look around, look around here for me But I'll be going on home Two wings, two wings Two wings to bear my face Two wings, two wings Just to bear my feet Two wings, two wings Just to fly away I know the world can't do me no harm Wait a minute Meet me, Jesus, meet me In the middle of the air, yeah If these two wings should fill me I want you to meet me with another pair Two wings, two wings Two wings to bear my face I want two wings Two wings to bear my feet I want two wings Two wings to fly away I know the world can't do me no harm Hey, hey. Up in glory, I've got a long white robe Oh, beyond under a new pair of shoes But most of all, I've got a long pair of wings I'll fly away, spread the news Two wings, two wings, two wings To bear my face, I want two wings Two wings, two wings, two wings To bear my feet, I want two wings Two wings, two wings to fly away, I know the world can't do me no harm. They can try to, but the world can't do me no harm. I know the world can't do me no harm. Hey, hey, one of these old mornings, and it won't be long. No. You look around here for me, but I'll be gone on home. Can I get? I'd like to say welcome to everyone who's tuned in on today. We are so thankful to be back yet another year celebrating the annual Windy City Lectureship. And we want to definitely thank Brother Penn for uh, organizing this, this great event and continuing to um, give our, our, our members and lost souls something that they can feed on um, for for a lectureship, amen. And it's and what I love about it is that it, it it's something that that Chicago holds, and it's something that that we can be that we can be proud of. And so we want to thank Brother Penn for all his endeavors in the Robbins Church of Christ, and uh, for all of their organizational skills and light and salt um, for always putting this on for us in such a spectacular way. And you know, we want to thank the preachers for being able to deliver the mighty word and extrapolate from the text. We've heard some great preaching, amen? So we want to uh, thank the preachers. Some of you all, uh, when God was handing out gifts, you got in line two times. So we want to thank the preachers for all of their, all of their excellent uh, pontificating skills. And, and we, we've just been having a great time virtually. Uh, now the, the theme, this year is on the other side of Jordan, taking a stand and capturing new land in a post-pandemic presence. Taking a stand and capturing new land in a post-pandemic presence. Uh, we have been given the luxury of choosing our own uh, subtopic. And so my, my subtopic this morning, if I could lift it for you, is don't miss your shout. 
Don't miss your shout. And I want to go over to Jer uh, Joshua chapter 6, and we really will just look at maybe the first three or four verses, and I'll be, I'll be done. Is that all right? Uh, don't miss your shout, Joshua chapter 6. Now, I'm reading from the New King James Version here, and the Bible says, Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of rams, horns, before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times. And the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass, the Bible says, verse 5, when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, every man straight before him. Uh, once again, subtopic, don't miss, don't miss your shout. In this text, if I could, just for a few moments, just want to pull out a few things. The first thing I want to pull out is, as we serve a God that is designated, providential, and specified. Uh, we serve a God that does not do anything on accident. Accident is one word you will not find in the Bible. The God that we serve does everything specified and he's always providential, and he's always designated. It's never on a whim. In this text, we see the, spe the, 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 the specified order that God gave the children of Israel. God told them, I want you to march around the walls of Jericho seven days, but for six days, I want you to go around one time. But then on the seventh day, I want you to go around seven times. And then God also said, when you hear the trumpet sound, I want you to shout. And then the walls of Jericho will come down. You see, in order to get deliverance from God, you have to do it exactly how he designated. In order to get deliverance from God, you have to obey. In order for God to bring you through, you have to be obedient. The deliverance comes when you do it according to his word. You understand what I'm saying? And then I want you to see that in this text, if they would have marched around five times, it wouldn't have done no good. If they would have marched around six times, it wouldn't have done no good. If they would have marched around seven days, but on the seventh day, they only marched around one time, it wouldn't have done any good. They had to do it exactly how God specified it in order for the deliverance to come. Now, sometimes we doing things the way we want to do it, and we wondering why God isn't bringing us through, and we wondering why God isn't changing our circumstance, because if you want the deliverance from the almighty God, the all powerful God, the sovereign God, who's everywhere at the same time, you must listen and you must obey and do it exactly how he designates for it to be done. Say amen when you can. Now I'm told, I'm told that the walls of Jericho stood about 13 feet high in the air. I'm told that the walls of Jericho stood about six feet wide of solid stone. I didn't say drywall, I said stone. I didn't say brick, I said stone. This was a fortified wall. It was not easy to come down. It was built, in fact, so that it wouldn't come down. It was built to be impenetrable. However, I've never seen a wall too high that God couldn't bring me over. I've never seen an obstacle too large that God couldn't get me around. I've never seen a valley too low that God couldn't bring me out of. What is important is that I obey his command and the deliverance will be mine. The victory will be mine. The glory will be mine because why? There is nothing too hard for God. 
Now I told you this today that the subject title was Don't Miss Your Shout, and I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there. But I want you to see that the walls of Jericho came down and the children of Israel were able to go in and seize that land. Now I wanna show you something here. I wanna show, I wanna show us in the text. Is that all right? Can I just show us in the text? Uh, prior to the pandemic, 2019 and, and past, the church was focused on what was going on behind the walls of the building. Say amen when you can. We were focused on what was going on behind the four walls of the congregation that we went to. We only wanted to do church things, talk to church people, and surround ourselves with church events. Amen, somebody. But when the pandemic happened, just like the walls of Jericho fell, uh, 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 I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to bring it back to you because the subject title is Capturing New Land. But when the pandemic happened, and, and, and we saw what happened around the world, just like the walls of Jericho fell, the walls of the church came down. And now God is telling us, God is showing us, I need you now to go out into a land and seize it. I need you now to go out into a world of lost souls and teach them. Go out into a world of lost souls and baptize them. Go out into a world that doesn't know my truth. A world that doesn't know the way, a world and teach them about who I am. I want you to go out and seize it. I believe God brought the walls down of the church to let us back out, to let us back out into a world because he's saying, I've given you this land. It is yours for the taking and you must go out and teach and preach and baptize. Say amen when you can. The walls of Jericho came down, but I'm telling you, this pandemic happened so that we can get outside of the walls of our congregations. And now what has happened is, the church is everywhere virtually, the church is everywhere on social media, the church is everywhere now. God wanted that to happen. God wanted us to go out into the world and be prepared to teach them what we know, be prepared to teach what we know, Jesus. Teach Jesus and him crucified. And so, listen, listen, some of us have gotten too comfortable and we're saying, I don't want to go out. I don't want to deal with this technology stuff. I just want to go back to the way that we used to do things. But I'm telling you that God has said, I'm getting ready to do a new thing. I'm telling you that we are here in 2022 to capture new land. In a post-pandemic presence, we are here now to take what we have into a lost world and help baptize and save souls and keep souls saved. That is our goal. That is our mission. And God has knocked these walls down so we can get uncomfortable. Some of us just got too comfortable. You, you, know, you know your favorite seat in the church and you want to get to your seat. You know who you want to talk to and that's all you want to talk to. You know who you want to talk about and that's all you want to talk about. Well, God took you out your seat. God took your friend away and now all you can talk about is Jesus. Say amen when you can. I got to go, y'all. Now, my topic is don't miss your shout. The theme is capturing new land in the post-pandemic present. So don't miss your shout. I want you to see this here. In the text, the Bible says, when the horn blew, when the trumpet blew, the people were to shout, and then the walls would come down. I'm here to tell you that now that we are trying to live in a post-pandemic world, you're gonna have to shout before something happened. You're gonna have to praise God as if somebody got baptized and ain't nothing happened yet. You're gonna have to praise God as if the church is full and we still trying to recuperate. You're gonna have to praise God as if the cars are double parked outside the building and we're still trying to get folks in the building. What are you trying to say, Brother Johnson? I'm trying to tell you, you're gonna have to shout before you see it happen. 
because the God I serve, in order for you to see, you must believe. When I believe, then I will see God show up in my life. It is when I know I can shout because I know God is about to do something. I know God is about to do a new thing. I don't need you complaining. I need you shouting. I don't need you gossiping. I need you shouting. I don't need you worrying. I need you shouting. I need you praising. I need you lifting up Jesus' name in the midst of this post-pandemic presence because God is about to do something better for the church than has ever been done before. Don't miss your shout. Let me tell you something. If you made it this far through the pandemic, you got something to shout about. You got something to shout about. You got something to praise about. You got something to be thankful about. You got something to say amen about. Don't miss your shout. Because it is when you shout, you can see some magic happen. It is when you praise, you can see some magic happen. You know why? Because you are believing before it happens. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. So if we're talking about capturing new land in the post-pandemic presence, I'm telling you, we're going to have to believe that it's already ours. We're going to have to believe that it is already ours. We're going to have to believe that we can bounce back from this pandemic. We're going to have to believe that we can continue to baptize folk. We're going to have to believe that we can still bring people in and bust out the seams with an overflow of a people, not just virtually, but in the building. We're going to have to believe that God can do it in order for it to happen. Amen, somebody. So we want to thank you. We want to thank you. But we want to encourage you today to not get so focused on what's not going right and focus on what's about to happen. And don't miss your shout becoming too concerned with negative things. Don't miss your shout becoming too concerned with other things. Focus on what God is about to do. God has given the church a second chance. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. We were on a, a serious decline, but God allowed this pandemic to happen so that the playing field can be even. And now it is time for us as Christians, as members of the body of Christ, to go out and conquer this foreign land because we got so used to only dealing with us. But it is a world out there that needs to hear Jesus. It is a world out there that needs to know about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's the world out there that needs to know about New Testament doctrine, and we have to be the ones to take it to them. Don't miss your shout. Don't miss your shout. And let's capture this new land in a post-pandemic presence. We love you so much, and we thank you for tuning in. And may God bless you, and may he bless you real well. without you wouldn't do me no harm but time has shown me they had it all wrong we're nothing without you just a bag of skin and bones what oh what a difference you made in my what life, a difference you made in my life. You're the of my joy and i know life. that everything know that is gonna be, be right. as long as i'm holding as as on I'm to you what you are. I know that everything is going to be as long as I keep holding on to you. All countless nights I spent contemplating all the things I had done that were oh so wrong. Now with tears in my eyes and shame on my face, I'm wondering why did I ever leave you? in the first place but to you all that stuff didn't matter because as soon as i repented you took me back in and what a difference you made in my you life. made a wonderful difference
regrets in my life. You see, my life was sad by the minute. But now your love's all up in. Oh, yeah. No, my life is not the same. I've changed. And it's all because of you. As long as I'm holding on. I'm holding on, yeah, 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 yeah. And I've got to tell you this because it's true. Now that I've got you, now that I've got you, my life is a sweet song, yes, it is. Now that I've got you, now that I've got you, now that I've got you, I'm less inclined to do wrong. Now that I've got you, hey, yeah. Once again, we've been blessed by the God of heaven to do with all things right and that he's allowed us to meet one more time on this blessed side of life. And we certainly need to give God all the glory, all the praise and all the honor. First and foremost, I wanna thank Dr. Penn and all those who have played a part in organizing this great lectureship for the privilege and honor to be a part of such a notable lectureship and part of such a great effort. Now, the lesson I've chosen for you today come from the book of Joshua chapter six and verse number 20. If you will, turn your Bibles there and follow along with me. And the Bible says, so the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets and it came to pass when the people heard the shout of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. So I wanna speak with this thought in our minds, overcoming your Jericho, overcoming your Jericho. Now, all of us have a Jericho that we need to overcome. And when we look at our text, they have crossed the Jordan. They have prepared themselves spiritually and physically and mentally and emotionally as they follow God's orders to the letter. And now they are ready to begin the conquest of the promised land. They're ready to claim for themselves that land that flows with milk and honey. However, anytime you're trying to claim your Canaan, anytime you're trying to overcome your Jericho, you're going to have to make some changes in your life if you're ever going to walk into the promises and claim what God has in store for you. They are ready to flex their muscles and they are ready to do what God has called them to do as they try to overcome this city. Now, that, this is the greatest and most fortified city in all of the promised land. As a matter of fact, for some of them, this is the first time they have ever seen a city as fortified as the city of Jericho. Now, when we look at this, in my opinion, God is preparing for us an opportunity 
to overcome our Jericho. We're living in a day of battle, spiritual struggle. And before we can win the battle, we need to know how to fight. We need to know who we are fighting. And we need to fight together and not fight against one another. So just as Israel faced the formidable walls of Jericho, you and I right now in the midst of this pandemic are facing some formidable walls and obstacles that we by faith need to overcome as well. The first thing I want you to notice is that in verse one, Israel had a problem. The only way you're going to overcome your problem is to admit, first of all, you have a problem. Jericho was known as the oldest city in the world at that particular time. And it was surrounded by a system of two massive stone walls. The outer wall was six, six feet thick and about 20 feet high. The inner wall was 12 feet thick and about 30 feet high. And between the walls was a guarded walkway about 15 feet wide. Israel's problem was that they had a city to conquer, but they were... Uh, in the process of trying to overcome some extremely huge walls, which were obstacles in their way. And I need to tell somebody right now, in the midst of this pandemic, you are facing a Jericho. And as you go through life, we all have obstacles that we have to face. But obstacles are nothing more than opportunities for our faith to shine. Perhaps your Jericho right now is the fact that you're struggling with some financial issues. Maybe you're struggling with some family trouble that is about to tear your home apart. Maybe you're struggling with some financial stresses in your life. Maybe you're dealing with some besetting sin that seems to always crop up in your life and you're struggling to overcome it. Maybe you've lost a loved one in the midst of this pandemic. Well, I dropped by to tell you, we're all dealing with some Jerichos that we need to overcome in our lives. So problems are a part of life, but it's not the problems, it's how you deal with the problem. And obstacles are nothing more than opportunities for us to overcome. And so not only did they have a problem, but praise God, they also had a promise. In chapter six and about verse two, the Lord told Joshua, see, I have given into your hands Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. God said, Joshua, I have already given you the city. Oh yes, it's still standing, but it's already yours. The king is still sitting on the throne, but it's already yours. The men of valor are guarding the city, but I dropped by to tell you, it's already yours. I read somewhere where there are 7,447 promises in the word of God. But when you get a word from the Lord, then you need to take that promise and stand on the word. Instead of standing on the premises, we need to stand on the promises of God. And God has given us promises throughout his word. We have his promise that our weapons are powerful, powerful through God. Second Corinthians chapter 10, about verse four and five, I believe the Bible says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God. Watch this, to the pulling down of stronghold, casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Whatever it is in your life, 
be it carnally, be it your imagination, be it some knowledge, be it some sin that seems to always overtake us, God has given us weapons to overcome it. We have his promise that our battles have been prearranged by the Lord. Romans 8 and verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good for those that love the Lord who are called according to his purpose. Whatever you are going through in life, God says there is purpose even in your problems. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 17, for our light affliction is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Your problems are nothing more than stepping stones to what God has promised you. We have his promise that our ability is only limited by our faith. Philippians 4 and verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Ephesians 3 and verse 20, this is my promise for everything I go through that seems to be a Jericho. Now unto him, watch this, unto him that is able, here it is, to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. That's a promise you need to stand on. We have the promise of power in the day of battle. Ephesians 6 and verse 10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We have his promise of ongoing victory, no matter what we face. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 57, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have the promise that he will always be with us. Hebrews 13 and verse five, he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Matthew 28 and verse 20, he said, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. We have his promise that when the battle is ended, we will celebrate victory in his presence. John 14 verses one, two, and three, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there, you may be all. So my friend, whatever you are going through, whatever your problems are, whatever your Jericho is, get you a word from the Lord and stand on that word and God will give you the victory. He told Joshua, see, I have given you Jericho. And Joshua stood on the promises of God. And my friend, you need to stand on the promises of God. The Bible says Abraham staggered not at the promises of God, but he was strong in the faith, giving glory to God. Romans 4 and verse 20. And then in verse 21 of Romans 4, it says, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Stand on the promises of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 20, the Bible says, for all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. Stand on his promises. Not only did they have problems, but not only were they standing on the promises but my friend, they had a partner. In Joshua chapter five, verses 13 through 15, we have Joshua experiencing a theophany, much like his predecessor Moses experienced a theophany. The pre-incarnate Christ visited Joshua 
And the Bible says, and it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, nay, but as the captain of the host of the Lord, I am now come. And the book says, and Joshua fell on his face to the earth and he began to worship him. And he said unto him, what saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host, that's Jesus, y'all, said unto Joshua in the same way God said to Moses, loose thy shoe off thy foot for the place whereupon thou standest is holy ground. And Joshua obeyed him. The pre-incarnate Christ was in essence saying to Joshua, I'm not here to take sides, but I'm here to take over. And when you partner with Jesus, it is not you and Jesus fighting the battle. The battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. So when the Lord is your partner, he's not coming to take sides. He's coming to take over. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My friend, you need to let go of the wheel and let Jesus do the driving. You need to get out of the captain seat and let Jesus do the flying. You need to get out of the way and you need to turn your life over to Jesus. Turn your trials over to Jesus. Turn your trouble over to Jesus. Turn your tribulations over to Jesus. Turn your obstacles over to Jesus. Turn your Jericho over over to Jesus, whatever it is that you're struggling with, you need to turn it over to Jesus because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Turn it over to Jesus. Quit trying to make it happen and turn it over to Jesus and let it happen. And that's the problem with many of us. We need to let go and let God. So they had a problem. They had a Jericho they needed to overcome. What's your Jericho? Hmm? Then they had a promise. They got a word from the Lord and they stood on that word. Are you standing on the word of God? Then they had a partner. They turned it over to Jesus so that Jesus could be the captain. Jesus could control the ship. And when Jesus is in control, it does not matter what's happening around the ship, when you own the ship, as long as Jesus is in control of the ship. Stories told about this carnival cruise that was caught up in a storm. It was in the midst of a hurricane and it was being tossed to and fro by the wind. All of the furniture and all of the passengers were displaced and in shock and they were afraid, but there was this little boy who all the passengers noticed he was cool, calm, and collected. And they began to ask him, young man, why are you so cool? Why are you so calm? Why are you so collected? And the young man replied, because I know the captain of the ship. Well, how do you know the captain? Well, he said, I know the captain because I've been on this cruise many times. They mean your family? Yes, my family and I, we've been on this cruise many times with the same captain. And he's brought us through worse storms than this. 
And they said, how do you know the captain so well? He said, I know the captain because I got a relationship with the captain because the captain is my father. And when you know the captain of the ship, you don't have anything to fear because if Jesus brings you to it, he'll bring you through it. So they had a problem. They had a promise. They had a partner. And because they had a partner, I dropped by to tell you, they prevailed. God had already given them instructions to march around the wall once a day for six days. And then on the seventh day, they were told to march around the wall on the seventh day, seven times. Can you imagine what that must have been like? Can you imagine the enemy from the wall mocking them, laughing at them, making fun of them? But see, they had a word from the Lord. They believed the word that they had from the Lord. They acted in faith because without faith, it is impossible to please God. They did it God's way. Now I know God's thoughts are not our thoughts, neither are his ways our ways, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, he said, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. But even so, trust God to make it happen when you do it his way. And then on the seventh day, they marched around the wall seven times. And on the seventh time, seventh time, the priests blew the trumpets. That's praise. And when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted with a great shout and the wall fell down flat. Praise gave them the victory. Look at what God did. He put praise in the front. The priest blew the trumpet. The people shouted and the wall came tumbling down. You better learn how to praise God when you're facing your Jericho. Because when you give God the glory, when your praises go up, your Jerichos will fall down. And God gave them the victory. And the book says, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword. God gave them the victory. They had a problem. They stood on a promise. They partnered with the pre-incarnate Christ. And God gave them the victory. They prevail. And I don't know who I'm preaching to or who I'm lecturing to, but right now you got a problem. But have you gotten a word from the Lord that you're standing on? Stand on that promise. If God said it, I believe it. And that settles it. And even if I don't believe it, guess what? It is already settled. And my friend, you will prevail. And when it's all said and done, we are going to prevail. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and about verse 51, Behold, I show unto you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment at the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised, and we shall be changed. For this corruption must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. Watch this. But thanks be to God 
which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, and therefore always let you know what is there for. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abound in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Don't worry about your problems. Stand on his promise. Partner with the Lord and you too will prevail. Thank you for this privilege and this opportunity. May God continue to bless Dr. Penn and his efforts and his great lectureship and all those who play a part in supporting him. We hope and pray that this word has been a blessing to someone. Thank you. Well, I'm singing all night and it's all day for the angel.
is over me.